Hi, it's Kelly. Um, I'm finally at my sit-down machine and so I'm going to go through a few steps on how to quilt on your regular sewing machine uh, with um, really emphasis on ruler work. But I'm going to show a few little tips and how to start free motion quilting. Um, so let's get started. Um, I'm on a Bernina 440. It does have a stitch regulator but I'm not going to use it uh, because I like to be the stitch regulator. So, and, and a lot of machines don't have it. So let's start with your feet. Because I sat down to my regular sewing foot and it needs to change. So I'm going to first take my foot off and I'm going to replace it with a quilting foot. And this is Bernina's quilting foot. It's uh, foot number 72. Uh, lots of machines are now making the ruler feet. You will also have um, a quilting foot that may have come with your machine or a darning foot that might have an open uh, an opening right here. Those are okay to use for free motion quilting, but you cannot use those for ruler work. So if you want to do ruler work, you really need to have this thicker hopping foot. Okay, so that's, um, that's a good eighth of an inch, uh, maybe a little bit more than that. So let's get that on there. It goes on really nice. Uh, the other thing you need to be able to do is drop your feed dogs. So let me show you my feed dogs normally would be up like this. And that's what you use when you do regular sewing. Most machines, unless they're really old, maybe featherweights, uh, will not be able to drop feed dogs. So there's a button someplace on your machine, and when I drop that, or when I hit that button, my feed dogs will drop. So that's what's really important is to make that smooth so you can move your move your fabric. Um, your your button may be in the back, it may be on the side, it may be in the front. Just um, Feel around until you feel that button. You probably have never known what that does if you haven't free motion quilted. So why free motion quilt on your domestic machine? Because it's fun and you can finish small pieces. I wouldn't probably finish a king size quilt, but anything small, wall hanging, a uh, baby quilt, lap size quilt, I would do on a regular machine. But let me show you what you need to start with. I think this is a really important tool this is called a Supreme Slider, and it's slick on the, on the top, and it's got Teflon on the back, so it will stick to whatever your little tabletop is. So I have a nice acrylic tabletop um, that fits right into my throat, and this little slider lays right there, and you'll see it only has one hole opening, so it's not going to work with those feed dogs up. This is only for free motion quilting. So it lays on there, it sticks, it, it just does a cling. Uh, a little cling to it, and if it gets dirty, if it gets dirty, just take a baby wipe or a, a damp towel and um, and that will make it cling again. So I pulled my bobbin thread up through that hole, so I've got all my threads just coming through that one hole. So I'm all set, I'm ready to free motion quilt. So what I would suggest is having just a bunch of scraps nearby. And this is just a piece of fabric uh, with batting and then another fabric. And actually, I had already played on this piece, so what I would tell you to do is just keep adding layers until it's a little bit too fat to play with, because I don't like to waste anything. So I've got my sandwich ready. Uh, the other thing that helps is having some gloves. So these are called machingers, and you can find them at quilt stores online. They're about $10. You can also use clean gardening gloves. But what's great about these is they have rubber tips. Um, there's also, you can put rubber glue, rubber cement on your fingertips. There's all kinds of things you can do to make, make this uh, grip. Because what you're wanting to do is be able to grip this fabric and move it around on your, on your tabletop. So, I put a few lines on here, but I'm not going to start ruler work yet because when I get on a machine, I haven't played on it in a while, I just need to play. So, I'm going to just um, show you how I start. We want all the threads up on the top, all of our working threads on top. So, we're going to pull the bobbin from the top, from the, the bobbin from the bottom. I put my, whoops, I have to put that down first. So, I put my hopping foot down. I pull the bobbin up, and then I just take my scissors and pull the bobbin through. Okay, so that pulled up my bobbin thread. I'm going to go back and set my needle and put my foot down. But I've still got a little bit of space in there for me to be able to free motion move that. 
Um, at this point, I just want you to put your pedal down and see what happens and move your piece of fabric. Just move it any way you like. What you're going to find is it feels really odd because normally you're used to your walking foot, your sewing foot that leads you along a line. This makes everything slick and that's what you want. You want it to be slick, but it's going to take a while moving your hands around with that piece of fabric just to get the feel of what this is. So right now you'll notice where my hands are. I kind of make a box around that that hopping foot and I keep it there. I reposition so I'll, I'll do my stitching I need to do and then if I get all the way over here then I'm going to reposition. Stop and reposition. And I always want to stop with my needle down, which it is. So when I, anytime I begin, I always start on scraps and I do a little bit of free motion movement just to get in the groove, okay? So I'm just doing some loops. The key to free motion quilting is getting a consistent stitch. You'll see if I take my fabric too fast and I stitch too slow. Let's try that. You see what happens is I get a really big stitch. If I push my pedal too fast and I move my hopping foot too slow, I don't get much of a stitch because it's really tiny. So the key is getting the right speed with the right pedal movement. And that takes a little time and practice, but just take lots of sandwiches. Don't work on anything that's important first and have fun with it. Okay, so rulers. Um, I've got four rulers and I'm going to go through the four different ones that I have. One is the ditch stitcher and this is my little slim ruler. It is nine inches long and it's an inch and a half wide and I like it because it fits in the, in the throat of a sewing machine. It also works well on a long arm machine. Um, these are all a quarter inch thick acrylic and these are fine to use with this ruler foot. The great thing about a ruler with free motion quilting is at this point, if I was free motion quilting and I had that quilting foot on and I wanted to do a straight line or ditch stitch, I would have to stop, break my threads, put my walking foot back on. And I don't want to do that. I want to just go from free motion quilting into ditch stitching. So at this point, all I have to do is put this ruler up next to my hopping foot. Um, normally, let's see if I can find it. When I am on a domestic machine, I may put grippers on these uh, rulers because I want them to stick. I don't want any movement. Um, I don't do that on the long arm because I want them to slide. But on these, I'm moving everything at the same time, so I want the grip. You can get those little sandpaper grips, handy quilter strips. Um, you can also take a dollop of rubber cement, put it on your ruler, and that makes a good grip after it's dry. Then you can peel it off if you don't want it anymore. Okay, so back to this ruler. The hopping foot is naturally made to be a quarter inch distance from any line, any ditching that you'll do. So if you put that ruler just right up against the hopping foot, you'll see you have a quarter inch line. So all I need to do at this point is give that a, a good eyeball. I'm going to put my hand on, uh, on the ruler, thumb and finger, uh, my fingers up at the top and I'm going to move everything. So I'm going to move the ruler, I'm going to move my fabric, I'm going to move everything at the same time while I gently rest that ruler against the hopping foot and I'm just slightly pressing down on it. I'm not going too fast, taking my time. And then when I get to an intersection, I'll stop with my needle down. At this point, you, you can just move your ruler to any line. What, what I think is, is odd in the beginning is you think that everything needs to be going front and back, front and back. But the, the wonderful part of using a quilting foot and a ruler is that you can go any direction you like. So once again, 
I can put the ruler right up against the foot, moving everything all at the same time. And my thread broke. <laughs> so let me be right back with you. Okay, we are literally back from the break because my thread broke, right? That's what happens when you film. So let's keep going. I'm gonna show you the Kelly Bean next. And I love this one because it's got a nice curve. It's a simple curve. It's not a curve that's, you know, it's just simple when you need a great curve. There's so many curved rulers out there. But this one has the same curve, convex and concave. And I use it for orange peels. I use it for flower petals. Um, so let's, let's do a little flower petal right now. I've put uh, grippers on this one so it, it, will, um, it will keep it really nicely, uh, nicely stationary for me. So I'm going to just do one side of a flower petal. And I'm going to stop with that down. I would have put grippers on the back side too. I'm going to just put the curve right a uh, quarter inch away from that intersection. Alright, I put little pieces of tape on just to make it stick for me that time. Normally I would put some good sandpaper on there. Okay, at this point maybe I'll say Oh, you know what? I think I'll put a leaf, vine, a leaf spine down this. See, so this is nice that I can take my ruler away when I want to, and I can free motion quilt when I want to. At this point, I may say, oh, you know what? I think I'll take one of my little rulers, uh, either the palm or the mini. And I like these when I'm doing some tiny little work. And I may put that right next to the hopping foot. And maybe I want to fill. Now this would be a little bit tedious, but in the same color, I might do this fill. And what I'm doing when I do uh, maybe a, a parallel line fill is I just scoot that ruler over just ever so slightly and make my straight lines. Um, these little rulers, the palm, which is a little bit wider, it has a nice curve so that it won't get caught up in seams. And then this little mini are good for when you're doing uh, just really short work. You see, I always have my fabric staying straight in front of me, but I can move that ruler and go any direction I want. Let's say I want to do a scallop. Let's get over scallops across a, a border or a sashing. I'm going to get right over here and take this one. Once again, I would probably have grips on this because it'll stay, stay put a lot easier. But I'm just very lightly following the curve of, of the ruler. I'm not pushing too hard against the foot and I'm not pushing too hard on the base. Let's see, let's go along this line. And if I need to move the ruler, I always stop with the needle down, slide my ruler, and keep going. Let's say I want to put another scallop in, a smaller scallop to echo it. I love these little ones because I can echo with this ruler. And I just backtrack. that little uh, curve down, maybe I come in here and I put something inside. So I can use the ruler, I can take it away, I can add it, I can free motion quilt, I can do all those things uh, all at the same time. Um, I hope that helped and gives you an idea of how to use the rulers when you're sitting at the machine. Um, have fun with them. Bye.